Preservation Officers and staff. Reading into the record, um, agenda item number 23, HDRC case number 2017534, address 433 Madeline Avenue and 437 Madeline Avenue. Request for uh, a request for review by the HDRC regarding eligibility of the property located at this address for landmark designation. Staff does not recommend approval of the request. Staff finds that the property does not meet the three of the 16 criteria for evaluation required by the UDC and is not eligible for landmark designation based on findings F through H. If the HDRC approves the request, the commission will become the applicant and will request a resolution from the city council to initiate the designation process. Jim Brooks, representing the Mankey Park Neighborhood Association Board of Directors, is the applicant for this case and she is with us today, as well as the property owners. Good afternoon. My name is Joan Brooks and I live at 134 Davis Court in Mankey Park. And I am the uh, president of the Mickey Park Neighborhood Association uh, Board of Directors. And we initiated this historic designation process for 433, 437 Madeline. This eight-plex along with the entire street of Madeline contributes to the historic significance of the neighborhood and supports the guiding principle of the San Antonio Comprehensive Plan to maintain the character and integrity of existing San Antonio neighborhoods. This A-plex um, was built in 1958. It's a classic mid-century modern mixed area design with a flat roof with extra wide overhang over the front facade uh, and modernist standing lamps in the front which has been adapted to Central Texas with stonewall cladding. Also, there are mature trees, as you can see on the site. Along with many of the other homes on Madeline, the structure contributes to the post-World War II housing that is very distinctive in character and part of the historical heritage and culture of Monkey Park in our city of San Antonio. Per our neighborhood plan on page 29 and 32, we recognize and promote the existing character of neighborhood housing through home ownership, home improvement and maintenance, rehabilitation, historic preservation, and discourage incompatible development. This eight-unit apartment represents a significant stage in the neighborhood's evolution during the mid-20th century. Choosing rehabilitation over demolition would provide an excellent opportunity also to promote affordable housing while preserving the character of the street. Demolition of post-war multifamily housing has occurred on Nowland, an adjacent street of Claremont, and we, the Neighborhood Association, want to stop this demolition that is drastically changing the context of the block and streetscape of the neighborhood. I, I was able to attend the kickoff meeting of the Mayor's Housing Task Force, and at that meeting, Trinity University Professor Christine Drennan uh, she actually launched the meeting and she stated that San Antonio is losing its diversity in housing and affordability. And she used our neighborhood and this area as uh, the example. She, she stated that these apartment plexes are being demolished and um, are being replaced with um, structures that cost over $300,000. So we, the uh, board, the directors of Lincoln Park, are urging the HDRC members to consider 433, 437 Madeline Avenue as historic and help preserve the historic fabric of our neighborhood. And that we're promoting that this should, property should be rehabilitated and not destroyed. In addition, I think you got a copy of, from Councilman Shaw supporting preservation of existing housing stock and the historic fabric of the Lincoln Park neighborhood. Thank you very much. And um, we actually have somebody signed in to speak. Ms. Brooks, I had a question for you. Right. How do we count how many 
many uh, structures have been demolished so far on Natalie and Claremont? Um, I don't have that whole total, but um, I was here what, two months ago with one, and so I don't have that, but there's been many that have been uh, demolished on, on Claremont. And getting ready to, on uh, these are three of the structures that are up today, and there's going to be, I know, at least uh, maybe three, two or three more. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually have somebody signed in to speak on this case. Uh, John Friesenhorn, he's the owner. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is John Friesenhorn. I imagine the owner of the property. Uh, the eight-plex here, now for a few months and the date of the structure is not been cared for. Uh, if you look at the rear, the picture on the right, the rear, the balconies there are deteriorated. The interior of the units have not been maintained for I don't know how many years. And the cost prohibited the process to try to rehabilitate this structure, bring the electrical, the plumbing, everything else, the, the building envelope, the windows, everything launched up to the current engine codes. And that is why we are seeking a demolition from the infrastructure to replace it with some, some new duplexes that will be built to meet all the modern codes. The Energy Star is certified and built into the current certified as well. Excuse me, sir. You know, I'll pose the same question to you. How many uh, structures has your company applied for demolition the last two years on between Claremont and the Dallas streets? Uh, we have probably eight. And of the structures, uh, eight being demolished, how many have been erected newly? We have built. Uh, the sites have been demolished, but uh, as the new team is in that range. It sounds pretty conservative from my assessment. Well, that's, that's, a, that's on the sites we've demolished. There, there were some vacant lots that we built onto. Would you say that your projects have transformed uh, the neighborhood? Yes. For the better. Most of the, many of the properties that we demolished have not been inhabited. That there were no habits there was a lot of debris. I think we talked to the police officers in the area. We cleaned up a lot of the neighborhood, taking care of some beginning drug activity that was going on. Thank you very much. Um, for the benefit of our new commissioner, um, and um, welcome to the club, um, could we understand a little bit better what the difference is between the historic district and the designation that Ricky Park has at the moment? Certainly, and welcome aboard, Commissioner Bush. Um, so currently, um, these properties are located within the Mankey Park Neighborhood Conservation District. And so what that means is that the city does have districts where there are design standards in place. And uh, if someone would like to modify a structure or build new within a neighborhood conservation district, they simply come to the one stop and they request that permit, providing that they meet those standards, which are noted in the UDC, then they are issued a permit. If they do not meet the standards, then they can seek a variance through the Board of Adjustments. And there is no special review for demolition within neighborhood conservation districts, aside from the uh, authority that OHP has to review citywide demolitions of uh, properties anywhere within the city limits of San Antonio, regardless of the age of the structure. And how does a neighborhood conservation district come to be a neighborhood conservation district? Is it a historic district in waiting, or is that some other consideration? Um, back in the day, they used to say that neighborhood conservation districts was a uh, historic district light, or perhaps a district that didn't rise to the level of historic district. Uh, that, that is not the case. Neighborhood conservation districts is a zoning tool. It's a way to regulate development within a district. Um, but in this case, the way it works, it's administrative approvals. So the involvement by the community is at the development of the district. Um, and, and the um, fleshing out of those standards happens before this is all adopted by ordinance. 
once it's adopted by ordinance, then the community's role in that stops at that point, and these requests are reviewed by staff and approved administratively, which is different from historic districts. Thank you. Uh, which staff reviews uh, those requests? That is uh, development services staff and the zoning section. And do we know if this structure was a contributing structure when the survey was made for the proposal of the historic district for Yes, it was. So how can a structure be eligible um, or be um, contributing structure but still not be so certainly that's a good question um, and these cases are difficult for staff because we're looking at a structure that does have characteristics of architectural style and are of an historic age and do contribute to a district however what we're being requested to review is the standings of the structure by itself and evaluating it on its own according to the criteria in the UDC we found that it only met two of the criteria and the UDC requires that it meet at least three uh, to be considered eligible for individual landmark designation. Understood. Uh, but in this case, there are a number of structures that are disappearing. One conservative estimate is eight uh, on two blocks. So doesn't this call for more uh, of a review on a holistic level rather than an individual level? So the regulations that would be applied to this property if it were designated as an individual landmark would be restricted to those modifications that happen within, within the site. So let's say, for example, an individual property is designated and demolition happens next door. Um, the zoning requirements for the landmark aren't necessarily going to impact the request of the non-designated property next door. So when we're evaluating these, we're also considering what those recommended treatments would be, which is related to the difference between looking at the impact to a district as opposed to impact to an individual structure. And that's where I think that the disconnect is. I don't see that we're looking at this um, issue holistically. We're looking at individual um, applicants uh, rather than the district as a whole. So it's not a historic district. It's a neighborhood conservation district. So staff's responsibility is to review these requests by property as they're submitted to our office. And, and I would just add that you know one of the findings by staff is that it, it, it is eligible to become a local historic district, and we do believe that that is an appropriate tool. Um, but so far, there hasn't been the support in the neighborhood to create a local historic district. Okay.
In staff's recommendations, if we look at finding F, which is the evaluation of the property, um, although the applicant proposed three criteria for eligibility, which included criteria 10, its characters and established geographical, geographically defined neighborhood, united by culture, architectural style, or physical plan and development, um, criteria 11, its distinctive and in character, interest, or value, which strongly exemplifies cultural, economic, social, ethnic, or historical heritage of San Antonio or the United States. And criteria 12, um, it is an important example of a particular architectural type or specimen. Staff uh, conducted its own evaluation, um, rating this property against all 16 criteria and determined that it is consistent with um, UDC criteria five, which is its embodiment of distinguishing characteristics of an architectural style, valuable for the study of a period, type, method, or method of construction, or use of indigenous materials. Because this property reflects the proliferation of post World War II multifamily housing, which um, happened in San Antonio, and that the structure is a typical example of a post World War II multifamily housing. Um, it is appropriate, although it is of appropriate age and displays characteristics, as I mentioned earlier, um, such as the mid century modern architecture, horizontal massing composition, low pitched roof, large windows. The style does not meet um, additional criteria required for landmark status. Great, great. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is that good discussion? All right, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same sign. Aye. Okay, we'll have to have a voice vote. Chairman Graham. Aye, that is four. Uh, Vice Chairman Bustamante. Opposed. Did you say nay? I'm sorry. Joan Brooks, and this property, 445, 447, 
that is right next to the one we just reviewed. Um, and we are requesting a historic designation process for this property. Um, we have found um, the reasons, number 10, about its character as established and geographically defined old neighborhood, uh, united by culture, architectural style, physical plan. It's located in Mankey Park, which is a suburb established in the 20th century by Luke and Mankey, and is part of Nadaman Terrace, which was platted by BG Irish Company in 1927. We also feel it's distinctive in character, interest, or value, and strongly exemplifies the culture, economic, social, ethical, or historical, historical heritage of San Antonio, Texas. It is an important example of a particular architectural type or specimen. These homes um, predate uh, 1951, and they are a craftsman style bungalows, similar to those found throughout Maggie Park, further to the east, and we believe they actually predate maybe back to the 20s. Um, they're in very good condition now, and the bungalows are not only historic in Maggie Park, but um, other neighborhoods of the Midtown uh, region. Again, along with many of the other homes on now in the structures, contributes to the post-World II housing, distinctive in character, and part of the historic heritage and culture of Nike Park and San Antonio. We again, are, are urging to have rehabilitation instead of uh, demolition for these structures and, and keep the affordable housing that we have now and preserving the character of the street, which has kept much kept much of this historic housing stock. So we are urging the HDRC members to look um, more holistically at our neighborhood and what's happening with all of these homes and um, that is changing the fabric of our neighborhood. And um, we strongly recommend and, and ask that this property be considered so that hopefully it can be rehabilitated instead of destroyed. And uh, I already made the case about being at the, uh, uh, the mayor's housing task force and about the support from Council Shaw. So thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, that was the only citizen to be heard? She's the applicant. So the, yeah, correct. So we have the, um, the owner who is signed in to speak as a citizen. John Kizanian. John Fritz and I was mentioning once again. These two structures, uh, when we were here previously, we, we heard the commission talk to us about looking for opportunities to relocate these houses, houses in the area. And so we did. We actively see, saw uh, several moving companies to look at these properties. Uh, Bernard and Bastoni discussed this with Ms. Brooks about uh, the neighborhood association asking if they had anybody interested in these houses and we were willing to help pay to relocate the home. And unfortunately, there's a couple of issues. They're too tall. So the roof would have to be partially removed. And secondly, the, uh, the structures have not been cared for. So there are rotten spots in the floor and the roof structure is not sound as well. So, uh, you know, I understand the desire to maintain affordable housing, but the reality is that with the cost to rehab, these would not be affordable, no longer be affordable housing, uh, or to remain in place. That is, uh, that's just a, the fact of it. And so we would, we would still be willing if there's somebody interested in homes to, to help pay for the cost to, to help relocate these two. Uh, um, if I may, I'm going to ask a question on this variation of Commissioner Lester's um, in the previous item. How many more of these are you going to be willing to, to demolish? We have target right now for two other duplex structures that we'll be removing. And 
this time, that is that is all that we the all that we own. We're not we're not actively seeking additional properties, but we have property owners, current residents in the neighborhood, calling us and asking if we're interested in their, their properties. We have met with the neighborhood boards, the neighborhood association board, and their land use committee. And we told both groups that if, if there's properties that they are adamant that we should stay away from, not entertain, to provide us a list of those. And we will. That, but I don't think it's fair to the other property owners in the neighborhood for the association just to say we don't want any demolition if we have property owners contacting us trying to sell the property. For this particular property, will it be refited? Um, what will be replaced? Or what will well, the NCD, which you know, said it's not a storage district, for the NCD, the minimum lot size is to replat is 50 foot wide. So we, these are all platted as 25 foot wide lots. We cannot build over the property line. Therefore, the, there is a plat in process to plat these to 50 foot wide home sites to build duplexes. We have followed the NCD and the UC, uh, UDC 100%. We have not asked for any variances on anything that we have constructed. Everything in the planning department review as well as building permit review without any variances required. Was there not a variance to have uh, the properties replatted to a very old 25 foot? 25 feet? We have not replatted anything less than 50 feet. There is a original plat from 1927 in place with 25 foot wide plots. And that's what you're using to construct some of the films? Correct. Yes. But no variance has been requested or issued by the city of Utah. But existing structures on those plats were not 25 feet wide? No. They built over the property line. They were Many of those properties are built on a multiple of and partial lots. And so with the current UDC, it's the only you, you're not allowed to build over a property line. A single family can't build over a property line if it's in the original configuration. And since these were a lot of these were old duplexes, we cannot build a new single family house over a new property line. So if we replied anything, it's a minimum of 50 foot lot, we comply with the, as I said, the UDC and the NCD in all cases. Just for clarification, is that what you're saying that to put this particular house in the city as is, if demolition being approved and you're going to have a duplex? Um, Constructed on just the lot. Yes, and these well, these 25 foot lots are would be replatted into basically kind of this. It's it would be it's a total of 200 feet with the property next door and and this property, but there's two partial lots that can make up the end section of each of those, and without getting additional people involved in that, we would be forced to do a full replat. So it'll be replanting four 50 foot wide lots. Which will allow you to go beyond the property line? No. Mm -hmm. We would then build within that four duplexes with this property and the adjacent property, which is previous case. You mentioned something about the cost for rehab. Did you do actual cost estimate for rehab if uh, you would have an addition uh, to the house or so you're decreasing footprint? Did you do that cost estimate and compare it to the new construction? Well, yes, we've reviewed it, and with the electrical plumbing and the energy code requirements, we would be basically stripping the house down to a shell. The floor, part of the floor was rotten and part of the roof was rotten, so while I don't, didn't put a firm dollar figure to it, it's, it would exceed the cost to demolish and roof. And, and some of these, while they're 
they're, they're, they're old structures. There's no closets. It's, it's it, these houses don't have the uh, the character that people are looking for in homes today. In you know, just one block over on Claremont, you know, you'll talk about preserving some of these houses. Well, somebody did that with one of these old duplexes that were built, you know, around World War II. They repainted it, put new floors, new cabinets, redid the house, and it's out on the market for nine months, and they finally called us. We purchased it and and have since demolished that structure. So it's it, it's just not a feasible. It's easy to say we have these homes, but there's not a market for it. In in the case of these structures, there are neighborhoods and there are there are structures within Mankey Park that definitely should be preserved and definitely should be rehabbed. These two streets are not not that structure. These structures don't exist in most cases on this street. There are there are some houses. For instance, down the street at uh, I don't know if the cross street is that connects over to Eleanor's and there's a house in the corner that is beautiful. It was redone 20 something years ago and it still looks beautiful. We're not gonna touch that house. If that owner called us, we would not we're not gonna see that house. That is the type of home that needs to be preserved in the neighborhood.